Welcome. In this video, I am going to explain what is white noise, what are AR processes, MA processes, how we identify AR process, MA process using ACF and PACF. So, I am going to explain these things. First of all, I am going to explain what is a white noise process. We say that epsilon t is a white noise process with mean zero standard deviation sigma square. What does this mean? That expected value of epsilon t, any expected value of x, epsilon t minus 1 or any other expected value of epsilon t, it has always mean equal 0 and expected value of t square or any other its legs have variance equals sigma square. This is basically equal to variance of epsilon t. Why? Because we know variance is equal to expected value of epsilon t minus expected value of epsilon t whole square as this is equal to 0. So, this will be equal to expected value of epsilon t square and its legs and all those have 0. So, this is our first condition. This is our second condition. Now, we go to our third condition for, uh, to be satisfied process to be white noise. Expected value of epsilon t, epsilon t minus 1 equal t minus s equal 0 for all s for all s not equal to 0. So, it means there is no autocorrelation. Basically, this is covariance between epsilon t and epsilon t minus s. So, this is the same as expected value of this one because mean of expected value of epsilon t, epsilon t minus s is equal to 0. So, in white noise process, we say it is 0. Let's now define moving average process. We usually have moving average always as q. So, we have a process xt which is weighted average of epsilons that is beta i epsilon t minus i that is epsilon t, its lag, its lag, its lag. So, we have up to 0 up to q lag that is current value will be epsilon t, beta naught. Next will be, so now you have weighted average. Basically, you have a weighted average because you have epsilon t, epsilon t minus 1 and you are assigning them weights equal to beta 1. For example, if we toss a coin, there will be head or tail. You get either plus 1 dollar or you get minus 1 dollar for tail. So, 1 dollar for head, minus 1 dollar for tail. So, what will be average value of for last four outcomes? So, you that will be equal to uh, sum of uh, epsilons or sum of your gains divided by 4. So, it means each epsilon is given the, uh, the weightage equal to 1 by 4. So, these are the betas. Now, we define ARMA models. Now, we define ARMA models. So, ARMA model, autoregressive moving average model usually denoted by P is order for AR and Q is uh, order for MA. A naught plus sum of I 1 to P AI YT minus I plus xt. We know xt in previous slide was equal to moving average. So, no. If you plug those values of xt, so this will be i 1 to p a i y t minus i plus sum of i 0 to q beta i epsilon t minus i. So, this is moving average of order q. This is moving average of order 1. This is autoregressive. These are the legs. So, why it is regressed and self-regressed, self-legs. So, if q is equal to 0, it is ARP process. If p equal to 0, it will be MAQ process. It will be MAQ process. So, let's now define what is stationary process before we go for imposing restrictions for process to be stationary. 
so okay let's move to the next slide so stationary process you see we have defined for epsilon t as white noise so what is our stationary process in stationary process we say that if a, a, your series has mean constant variance of yt is also constant and covariance between yt and yt minus s which will be equal to expected value of yt minus mu and yt minus s minus mu because mu in this case is not necessarily zero is a gamma of s that is a function of their lag values so in the white noise process we say that if we have this zero this one same and this is expected value of yt minus mu square so and we say this one also zero in white noise but in stationary we say it's 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 not a function of time but it's not necessarily zero so it's it's the definition of stationary process now let's work with ar process now let's work with ar process so let we have ar pro process and let we have ar1 process auto regressive of order 1 yt is equal to a not plus a1 yt minus 1 plus epsilon t so you can say that q is equal to 0 in previous slide and p equal to 1 so you will get this this if we you have q equal 0 p equal 1 we get this equation which is called a r 1 process why we call auto regressive because y it is regressed on its own first leg why it is regressed on its own first leg so we call it as auto regressive process now let's do little backward substitution y t equal to a naught plus a1 y t minus 1 will be a naught plus a1 y t minus 2 plus epsilon t minus 1 plus epsilon t so this will be equal to a naught plus a naught a1 this one and this one plus a1 square y t minus 2 plus a1 epsilon t minus 1 plus epsilon t if we keep on substituting backward it will be a naught 1 plus a1 plus a1 square and so on plus a1 raised power t minus 1 plus a1 raised power just like this way a1 raised power t y naught means you have reached back till you, you, you don't have y naught value there and then you have this one can be summarized as a1 raised to power i uh, a raised or uh, 1 raised power t epsilon t minus i i vary from 0 to t minus 1 so now you see note down this equation i am going to rewrite on the on the uh, 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 next page so y t is equal to basically this is equal to a naught sum of i 0 to t minus 1 a 1 raised to power i plus a 1 raised by t y naught plus sum of a 1 raised by t a 1 raised power epsilon a 1 raised per i epsilon t minus i i 0 to t minus 1 so now you see this y naught if if it's any value now if we impose a condition that a1 in absolute is less than 1 
that is it is between minus 1 and plus 1 what does this mean that when t will be large for large t for t large what will be the case a1 raised per t will approach 0 because for example if a1 is 0 0.5 0 0.5 square 0 0.5 cube 0 0.5 raised per 10 so it will approach 0 so it means this term will become 0 so expected value of epsilon t and so expected value of y t will be equal to and this term if you keep on expanding it this one will be a naught over 1 minus a1 by geometric series and mean of expected value of epsilon t is 0 so mean of y t is a naught over 1 minus a1 that is your a r 1 process mean that is your a r 1 process mean Similarly, if you have mean of expected value of y t minus s, so it will be the same except that you have no a naught sum of a 1 raised per i, i 0 to t plus s minus 1 plus a 1 raised per a 1 raised per uh, k, what will be this one, a 1 raised per t plus s s y naught plus the same term with little notation uh, with little summation different t plus s minus 1 rest will be same so again its mean will be a naught over 1 minus a1 so this is the mean of auto regressive order 1 this is mean of auto regressive order 1 now let's take variance of this one so what is variance of yt? Variance of yt will be equal to expected value of yt minus mu and you know that for large we have yt equal to a naught uh, sum of a1 raised per i plus a1 raised per t y naught. So this is 0 for large t and you have this term here. So this will be equal to expected value of and this square this will be equal to expected value of epsilon t plus a 1 expected value of t my a sorry epsilon t minus 1 a 2 epsilon t minus 2 and so on a, sorry a 1 square epsilon t and so on each square no, when we know that expected value of epsilon t square plus variance, so constant will come out as square, expected value of epsilon t minus 1 square plus a14, expected value of epsilon t minus 2 square and so on plus 2 times cross products. But their covariance, we have defined that in white noise, this all is equal to 0. So this will be equal to sigma square. And this one is sigma square. So 1 plus a1 square. This is sigma square, which I have taken common, plus a14. And if you apply geometric progression, uh, 1 minus a1 square will be the result of this, if you summarize it. Now let's see covariance of yt and yt minus s. So this will be equal to, this is very useful thing. Uh, I, can, I can understand that this may be getting prolonged, but this is very important to understand how to identify model AR models through ACF or PACF and MA models. So yt minus mu, yt minus s, minus mu and if you will uh, 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 this one here as it is expect for this one expected value of epsilon t plus a1 epsilon t minus 1 plus so on and epsilon t minus s plus a1 epsilon t minus s minus 1 
plus a1 square epsilon t minus s minus t plus s minus 2 and so on. When you will, uh, you can do it for a small exercise that instead of s taking it as general, you can s take s equal to 3 and then, then uh, do these calculations. When you will do this, you will get it like this way, sigma 1 square, sigma square and some terms here will come out to be common. For example, when we will reach here, we will have some a1 raised power t minus s into epsilon t minus s. So, so this one will multiply with this one, this will be sigma square. So, this one will be equal to 1 plus uh, the a1 raised power s, uh, 1 plus uh, a1 square plus a2, a1 4 and so on. This will be equal to sigma square a1 raised to power s over 1 minus a1 square. Very important result this one. This one. This one. And obviously the mean is a0 over 1 minus a1. So now you see for process to be stationary or how to identify model from is uh, uh, autocorrelation function or partial autocorrelation function. These things will be used. These things will be used. This is called various variance is always gamma naught. That is lag zero lag. This is called covariances. These are called covariances. Gamma s means gamma with t minus s lags. So let's define ACF. Uh, video is getting a bit longer, so I'll I'll explain. Oh, sorry. So so let's. What is ACF? Autocorrelation function is basically you have legs on horizontal axis and correlations on vertical axis. So at zero lag correlation will always be one because correlation with itself. At lag one there will be correlation lag two, lag three, lag four. So this plot is called autocore. Uh, this plot is called autocorrelation function. Now you see first of all we have calculated gamma naught which was equal to sigma square over one minus a one square. Then we have calculated gamma s in the previous slide which was sigma square a1 raised to power s over 1 minus a1 square. So now you see auto -cor uh, correlation. Correlation is basically this one was variance. This is gamma s covariance. I'll explain one more thing before I finish this video that in time series data, we have slightly different, uh, uh, different way of writing uh, cor uh, correlation. In simple correlation function we say covariance between x and y divided by standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y. In time series correlation between yt, yt minus 1 equal to, no you see yt for example if you yt are 100, 100 values and yt minus 1 will be 99 values only one leg difference. So this is the same series more or less, it only difference is one leg. So its standard deviation will be almost the same as its standard deviation. So we write it usually covariance of yt, yt minus 1 divided by standard deviation of yt, standard deviation of yt minus 1. They are so close to each other that we have a standard notation that we write it as variance of yt. And this one variance of yt is your gamma naught. And this one lag 1 is your gamma 1. So gamma 1 by gamma naught is core, uh, auto correlation function at lag 1. So auto correlation function at lag 0 will be gamma naught over gamma naught. This will be 1. Auto correlation function. A auto correlation function at lag 1 means correlation between 
y t and y t minus one. So it means s is one. So this is equal to covariance between y t y t minus one divided by variance of y t variance of y t. So you see this variance of covariance is gamma one. This is gamma one divided by gamma naught. So from this, what will be gamma one? So it means s is one. So it means s is one. So s is one. So this will be sigma square a one divided by one minus a one square divided by gamma naught, which is sigma square divided by one minus a one square. So this term will cancel out with this one and this one. We are left with a one. So what will be gamma two? Gamma two will be equal to correlation between y t and y t minus two divided by gamma naught. So this one will be equal to sigma square a one raised per s. S is two here. One minus a one square divided by sigma square over one minus a one square. So this is equal to a one square. Row three. Oh, sorry. This is row two. Row three will be equal to a one cube. Row four will be equal to a one raised per four, and so on. So it means auto correlation function of a r process will be at leg one. It will be one. Zero one, it will be a one. It will be a one square. So if a one is less than one, so it will decline geometrically. If a one is small, so it will be. It will immediately go to zero with certain legs. So this is first leg, second leg, third leg, fourth leg, fifth leg, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. I'll explain in my next video how ACF of MM. Process behaves. How ACF of MA process behaves, or we can continue here as well. We can continue here as well. Okay, let's go. Y T is equal to no MA process epsilon T plus beta one epsilon T minus one. Let's we have take MA one process. Let's we take as in that case we have taken A R one process. Here we take a, a, a MA one process. No expected value of y t. We know expected value of epsilon t beta one x is zero. Variance of epsilon t y t will be equal to obviously if, 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 if y t minus e of y t. So e of y t is zero. So therefore this will be expected value of y t square, and y t square will be equal to expected value of Epsilon t square plus beta one, epsilon t beta one square, epsilon t minus one square plus two times covariance between epsilon t epsilon t minus one. But this is always zero as per white noise definition. So this will be expected value of epsilon t is sigma square plus beta one square. Expected value of t minus one square is sigma square. This is zero. So sigma square one plus beta one square. Now let's calculate co uh, uh, the covariance of y t y t minus one. So this is your gamma naught. Let's calculate covariance of y t y t minus one. So this will be equal to expected value of epsilon t plus beta one epsilon t minus one minus its mean that is zero times expected value of we are taking leg t minus one beta one. Epsilon t minus two. Its mean is zero. Now you see expected value of epsilon t. Epsilon t minus one. Their covariance zero. T minus one. T minus two is zero. So we have only one term here which will be square. So all other terms will have covariance equal to zero. Beta one expected value of epsilon t minus one square. All other terms covariances are zero. So it means gamma one is gamma one is beta one sigma square beta one sigma square. Let's calculate gamma two quickly. Expected value of epsilon t plus beta one 
epsilon t minus 1 and yt minus 2. Basically, gamma 2 is covariance between yt and yt minus 2 and yt minus 2 will be this one, beta 1, epsilon t minus 2. So, this will be equal to, now you see this one covariance 0, this one with this one 0, t minus 3. Uh, uh, yes, t minus 1, t, t minus 2, yes. So, there will be no term, all these covariances are 0 as per white noise process. So, it means gamma 2 is 0, gamma 3 is 0, gamma 4 is equal to 0, so and so on. It means rho naught is 1 because it's gamma naught over gamma naught. Rho 1 is equal to beta 1 square, sigma square, sorry. Rho 1 is uh, gamma 1 over gamma naught. So, gamma 1 is beta 1 sigma square, whereas gamma naught we have calculated on previous slide that was equal to sigma square 1 plus beta 1 square. Sigma square 1 plus beta 1 square. So, this will cancel out, this will be covariance. What will be rho 2? Rho 2 will be equal to gamma 2 over gamma naught. But gamma 2 is 0, so this one, rho 3 is equal to 0. It means if you have a process, A or MA, MA process, its ACF will be at lag 1, 0, it will be 1, obviously. But at lag 1, it will exist something. But at lag 2, what is rho 2? Rho 2 is 0 for moving average process. At lag 3, it's 0. At lag 4, it's 0. At lag 5, it's 0. So, it means if you have an ACF like this way, you will think of having MA1 model. If you have an ACF like geometrically decaying A1 square, A1 cube, A1 4, A1 5. So, it's not becoming 0. So, it means it's an AR1 process. So, in this way, I have just tried to explain that how you can run MA1, how you can identify MA1 process, AR1 process from ACF. We have yet to discuss PACF. We have yet to discuss Yule Walker equations and some other conditions for stationarity. Stay in touch. Take care.